Let's start in Taiwan, where William Lai has won the election and is set to become Taiwan's president. Lai is representing the governing DPP and is set to succeed the current president Tsai Ing-wen. Lai has been labelled a troublemaker by China, as Beijing warned people against voting for him. In his acceptance speech, he said he is determined to safeguard Taiwan from continuing threat and intimidation from China and will maintain the cross-state status quo. Around 19 million voters were called to elect a new president, and my colleague Steve Lai is in Taipei and joins me now. Over to you, Steve. Yeah, thanks very much for that. Just five hours after the uh, polls closed and election counting began, we've already had concession speeches and a victory speech uh, from William Lai from the Democratic Progressive Party. Uh, what it means for their relationship going forward with uh, China, that is the big question on everyone's minds. And uh, for, to help us with some of the answers for that, I'm joined by Shelley Rigger. From Bra She's a Brown professor at the Asian Politics at Davidson College. Shelley, thanks for joining me up here on the rooftop. Uh, just to get your immediate reaction to the results that we've seen very much in line with polls, so perhaps not such a big surprise? Not really, no. Um, I think it's good that uh, William Lai won with a little bit more than 40%. Uh, below 40% would be a pretty uh, slim mandate, and even a little above 40% isn't as maybe as much of a mandate as we would like. But I, you know, I think it is consistent with expectation and, and puts him in a reasonably good position. And then the other two candidates also kind of following up um, pretty much in line with expectations, yeah. And you mentioned that 40% sort of line there. That's because there's three candidates in this race. And to win the presidency, you only needed to garner the most number of votes. Right. So that means that you know, this is not a president who can claim a mandate or a majority. Uh, but kind of just has to say, well, more people liked me than the other two guys, so, uh, you know, we move on from here. This isn't the first time that's happened in Taiwan. In 2000, there was also a three-way race, and Chen Shui-bian won with 39%. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not a great start, honestly, to um, Lai's presidency. And going forward then, we've just heard, uh, leading into this uh, chat with you, our colleague in London saying that during Lai's a victory speech. He said that he wanted to safeguard uh, Taiwan's interests, uh, referring uh, to the relationship Taiwan has with China. I do see that as being a an ongoing uh, of policy sort of continuation from Tsai Ing-wen, the former president. Right. Yeah. Uh, Lai has said all along during the campaign that his goal was to continue the successful policy that uh, Tsai has pursued of keeping Taiwan secure and separate, uh, self-governing, democratic, separate from mainland China. I think uh, it will be tricky for him. It hasn't been easy for Tsai to maintain a really straightforward and uh, consistent path. But he has, uh, you know, she's, she's laid a good groundwork for him. So um, he's, he couldn't be in a stronger position, I guess. So it's not, he, you say he's in a strong position, but given the numbers that he, he garnered, it hasn't been exactly a ringing endorsement. So do you think he'll also have to take on board the message that these numbers tell him about uh, how strongly supported he is by Taiwanese that voted today? Yeah, I think the message actually of the election for, for Lai is less about cross-strait relations or uh, Taiwan's relationship with mainland China and more about some of the domestic issues. Uh, there was actually pretty much similarity across the campaigns on the questions of, of Taiwan's status in the world and Taiwan's relationship with mainland China. Nobody is seeking formal unification. Nobody is seeking formal independence. All three candidates were really focused on what's the best. Do they all, We're all claiming to have the best approach to maintaining the current situation in Taiwan, which is to be separate, democratic, self-governing, but also not um, challenging the PRC in a way that could lead to um, potentially even military conflict. Where I think there is a a uh, lot more room for improvement for the DPP is on domestic issues. 
uh, things like housing and wages, especially for young workers. Those seem to be the issues that pushed a lot of young voters toward the third candidate, Ko Wenzhe, who actually did pretty well tonight, um, coming in with over 20 percent of the vote in this three-way race, even though he doesn't really have an established political party behind him. And uh, a lot of his positions were kind of vague. But there is a strong dissatisfaction with kind of the, the domestic policy status quo. And I think uh, Lai will need to work on those issues if he wants another term. Yeah, this election was almost happening sort of in parallel with, a, with another election. You have the geopolitics on one side of this uh, big discussion, and you also have the domestic issues uh, that were also on the minds of many voters. And, and as you say, that is something we in Lai Wei have to uh, pay closer attention to, uh, given the uh, success or the rise of, of the TPP and uh, Ko Wen Jia. Uh, Shelley Riga, thanks so much for speaking with me today. Shelley Riga, Brown Professor at Asian Politics at Davidson College. Also something to keep in mind about how this election played out. We talked about William Lai getting 40 percent of um, votes from, the, uh, from this election in the presidential campaign and it not being you know, a majority of more than 50 percent because uh, there were two parties uh, involved. And we were, and that is because with the two other two parties involved, the opposition of KMT and the TPP, uh, that meant uh, that the vote was split. But there was a moment in time uh, before uh, the election took place and leading up to the election when those two uh, opposition parties were thinking of joining forces, and you know their combined total was around 60 percent, which means that you know perhaps they could have won if they hadn't uh, if they hadn't uh, fallen apart at the last minute. And that's something. Uh, that Jason Su, who I spoke to earlier, uh, wanted to reiterate. Uh, opposition camp uh, split into two parties, and the two mm. parties' voting votes combined are over 60 percent of total votes. So you can see that this is a, a very unfortunate situation. 60 percent of voters actually wanted a change of the uh, government, but yet we now have a, a rather weakened uh, president. And I think uh, uh, it will be uh, uh, important to see how he will deal with a rather divided uh, legislative yuan as well when uh, DPP is also likely to lose the majority and with uh, a TPP and a KMT uh, combined will hold majority seats.